Early one morning, SpongeBob was sitting at the Bikini Bottom bus stop. He was thinking about where he and his friends were gonna go for vacation. Hmm, I wonder where we could go on vacation that's fun. An old man just happened to be standing next to him and overheard. Excuse me, sir, but I couldn't help but overhear that you needed a vacation. Why, yes I am, Mr. John Hammond at your service. And I may know a vacation spot that you might like. Hmm, go on. You see, I own an island off the coast of Costa Rica. And on that island is a theme park unlike any other. What kind of theme park? Oh, ho, ho. I think it's better if I show you. I'll give you some time to think about it. Here's my business card. And by the way, what is your name? My name is SpongeBob SquarePants. Nice to meet you, SpongeBob. I can't wait to hear from you. Later that day at SpongeBob's house, SpongeBob gathered his friends and explained the situation to them. Let me get this straight, SpongeBob. You're telling us that some old guy went up to you and told you about this island? And on that island is some sort of theme park? That is correct, you guys. But I don't know, I'm a little skeptical on the idea. Well, we do need a vacation, so it might be nice. Yeah, and it's been a very long time since I took a vacation of my own. Personally, I could use a vacation. Hello, my friends, am I interrupting something? Not at all, Buck. But while you're here, can I ask you a favor? Anything for my good friend, SpongeBob. My friends and I are going on vacation. Could you watch my snail Gary while we're gone? Of course I can. I've taken care of pets in the past. In that case, I'm going to give Hammond a call. And SpongeBob picked up the phone to call Hammond. After his phone call with John Hammond, SpongeBob began to pack his things in preparation for the next morning. When he was finished, he tucked himself in. Good night, Gary. Meow. And with that, SpongeBob went to sleep. The next morning, SpongeBob was making some final preparations before the vacation. Hey, SpongeBob, are you ready? Sandy, if I wasn't ready, my name wouldn't be SpongeBob SquarePants. That's a good point. All right, everybody, let's set sail. We don't want to be late. Will Gary be okay with you, Buck? Don't worry, SpongeBob. Gary is in good hands. Good luck, my friends. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Hammond had sent a private helicopter to pick up SpongeBob and his friends, and they were on Isla Nublar one helicopter ride later. John Hammond gave a heartwarming welcome to the gang. Hello, SpongeBob and friends. Welcome. Nice to see you again, Mr. Hammond. But what kind of park is this anyway? All in good time, SpongeBob. You'll find out soon enough. Oh no, the suspense is killing me. Hey, I just wanted to say thank you for offering us this trip, Mr. Hammond. Oh, of course, Miss Cheeks. I promise you this vacation will be well worth it. Well then, what are we waiting for? Let's explore this place. And SpongeBob and his friends hopped on to a conveniently placed Jeep. Soon, the gang found themselves on an open field. The gang looked around the perimeter. I don't get it. What are we looking at? I don't get it either. All I see is grass, water, a dinosaur. Wait! A dinosaur?! And sure enough, there was a dinosaur standing in front of them. Well, what do you think? I... 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 I don't know what to say. I don't believe it. <sighs> that can't be real. How do we know it's not an animatronic or special effects or something? Oh, I assure you, Mr. Tennis Balls. It's tentacles. Close enough. As I was saying, that right there is a living, breathing dinosaur. How fast can they run? Well, Miss Cheeks, we clocked the T-Rex at 32 miles per hour. Wait a minute, Mr. Hammond. Did you say you've got a T-Rex? Precisely. Say that again? <laughs> we have a T-Rex. SpongeBob was stunned by what he just heard. SpongeBob and friends, welcome to Jurassic Park. SpongeBob and his friends looked in amazement. There were dinosaurs everywhere. How did you do this? I'll show you. After a brief presentation from Mr. DNA, Hammond gave SpongeBob and his friends a tour of the island. They saw stegosaurs, parasaurs, a brachiosaurus, triceratops, and gallimimus, just to name a few. And that over there is the raptor enclosure. And sure enough, there are raptors. 
Now to visit the Tyrannosaur Paddock. Mr. Hammond, I have to say, I'm impressed. Me too, Mr. Hammond. But I still don't understand how this works. I mean, bringing dinosaurs back to life with a prehistoric mosquito? Sounds a bit fishy to me. Uh, Mr. Hammond, what lives in that enclosure? Plankton was pointing at a mysterious enclosure. Oh, that's where Mortem lives. We don't talk about her, though. What the barnacles is a Mortem? My question exactly. The Mortem Rex was created from scratch by Dr. Wu. He wanted something bigger and more terrifying than the T-Rex. What happened, Mr. Hammond? The creature was deemed too dangerous for the public. So we kept her in hiding. Do you at least take care of her? I always have workers over there, but many of them have lost their lives. But one thing's for sure, I do not want her causing a ruckus again. Oh, that's just fine with me. I Wait a minute, what do you mean again? She escaped once before. She was only an adolescent at the time. Luckily, we were able to recapture her and relocate her to a more secure paddock. Ooh, look at that thing's eye. SpongeBob and the others saw Morton's eye glaring at them. Oh, Mr. Hammond, I'm hungry. What's for dinner? How about some chili and sea bar? Oh, right, sorry. And with that, SpongeBob and his friends, along with John Hammond, went to the nearest restaurant. But no sooner did they leave, Mortem was planning her escape. About an hour later, SpongeBob and his friends were finishing their dinner. Mmm, I must say, Mr. Hammond, this is some really good food. I agree. Do you happen to have a secret recipe by any chance? Ow! Plankton, that's very rude. Then the telephone rang. Excuse me, I must answer this. Hammond picked up the phone. Hello? What? That's impossible. We were just there. Thank you for letting me know. Good day. Everyone, we have to evacuate immediately. But why, Mr. Hammond? We just got here. Then they heard a loud uh, was that the T-Rex? I don't think so, Patrick. It sounds bigger. SpongeBob and his friends quickly evacuated the restaurant. As they were running, they heard another, followed by some loud gunshots. The gang bumped into one of the staff members. Martin, what's going on? Mr. Hammond, Mortem has escaped, and she's much stronger now. Mortem? Stronger? I barely managed to escape, but she's still nearby. Then they heard loud footsteps and no She's heading this way! Everyone run for your lives! Then out of nowhere, Mortem appeared. She killed the employee. <gasps> Holy shrimp! I think now is a good time to run! And SpongeBob and his friends, along with Hammond, made a break for it. With the Mortem Rex in hot pursuit. I have an idea. Let's split up into two groups. The Mortem Rex is getting closer. Good idea, Plankton! The gang then proceeded to split up into two groups. SpongeBob, Patrick, Sandy, and Squidward formed one group, while Hammond, Plankton, and Mr. Krabs formed another group. Mortem's attention was on SpongeBob's group. She's gaining on us! We can't give up! We have to keep running! Quick, there's a fence over there! We can climb over it! Are you crazy, SpongeBob? What if that fence is turned on? There's only one way to find out. Squidward grabbed a stick and threw it at the fence. Nothing happened! Let's climb over it! And SpongeBob and his friends proceeded to climb over the fence. Woo! We made it! But so did the Sweet mother of Neptune! The gang walked into the Triceratops enclosure. One Triceratops was preparing to charge. Not at SpongeBob and his friends, but at the I think there's going to be a fight! Squidward was right. The Triceratops charged at Mortem. That Triceratops will hold Mortem Rex off long enough for us to escape. Let's go! And SpongeBob and his friends made a run for it. But SpongeBob couldn't help but look back as Mortem overpowered the poor Triceratops. Oh my Neptune! All poor SpongeBob could do was watch in horror as the Triceratops got ripped to shreds. SpongeBob, we have to go. Oh. Dear Neptune. But in all seriousness, we have to go, SpongeBob. SpongeBob couldn't help but shed some tears. But he knew Squidward was right. He had to keep going. Mortem let out a loud roar in triumph. The rest of the Triceratops herd made a run for it. 
SpongeBob and his friends managed to find a log to hide in. Phew, that was close. Is everyone okay? Sandy, I am so glad that you and Patrick didn't see what Squidward and I just saw. I agree. What we saw back there was pretty messed up. Squidward, let's never speak of this again. Agreed. Patrick, are you alright? I'm okay, SpongeBob, I guess. That mortem is clearly no joke. I know. It's only a matter of time before she finds us again. We're gonna have to find our way out of the jungle before she finds us. Agreed. Meanwhile, John Hammond, along with Plankton and Mr. Krabs, made it to the communication center. I hope SpongeBob and the others made it out all right. If I may, Mr. Hammond, I've known SpongeBob for a very long time. He's one of my employees at my restaurant, but I also see him as a sun figure. But SpongeBob is no stranger to fighting giants. What are you trying to say, Mr. Krabs? We fought beings way scarier than this one in the past. He's right, Hammond. We just fought a kaiju not that long ago. One that towers over Mortem. We actually fought a few kaiju. We also fought godlike beings. What we're trying to say, Mr. Hammond, is if SpongeBob can handle a kaiju, then he can handle anything. He's a strong little fellow? Not exactly strength-wise, but he's actually pretty intelligent. For a moron. You're probably right. Then the alarm went off. What's going on, Hammond? I don't know. Let me check the computer. He went to check the computer. Oh, dear. What is it, Mr. Hammond? The Mortem Rex is heading towards the Raptor Enclosure. The Raptor Enclosure? It's bad enough we have to deal with that giant, but we have to fight raptors on top of it? Sweet Davy Jones! Meanwhile, SpongeBob and the others heard the alarm, too. Where's that alarm coming from? I don't know, Patrick, but it must mean something bad. Then they heard the trees rustling and a growling noise. Uh, is that Mortem? I don't think so, Patrick. It sounds too small to be Mortem. Um, guys, I don't think we're alone. Then a raptor poked its head out of the bushes, followed by another, then another. Soon, an entire pack of raptors surrounded the group. Holy fish paste, how did the raptors get out? I'm not sure, but we're gonna have to fight for our lives. One raptor pounced at them. The group dodged the pounce. Then another pounced at them. The group dodged again, and the raptor accidentally hit another raptor. Soon, a fight broke out between the raptors. Wow, for a creature that's supposed to be really smart, they have a very low attention span. Then the raptors quickly turned towards the floor. Nice going, Squidward. You just had to open your mouth, didn't you? Guys, forget about that. Let's get out of here. And the gang quickly made a run for it. When the raptors talked for speed, we'll never outrun them. The raptors eventually got the gang cornered. Well, it looks like it's over. Why did I have to open my mouth? The four closed their eyes tightly, bracing for impact. As the raptors closed in on the heroes, they all heard another sound. Is that the Mortem? Again, Patrick, too small to be the Mortem. Everyone, look! And out of the bushes came a little dinosaur. It was about the size of the raptors, but looked very different. What is that thing? I believe that's a Dilophosaurus. The Dilophosaurus stood up to make itself taller. One raptor grabbed the Dilophosaurus. Then it charged the Dilophosaurus. The Dilophosaurus retreated. That was weird. The raptors then turned their attention back towards the group. Then the Dilophosaurus came back. But this time, it wasn't alone. One Dilophosaurus released its frill, and the others followed suit. The raptors held their ground and growled at the Dilophosaurus. One Dilophosaurus spat upon the raptors, and soon it turned into a the fight was stopped. Then, out of the trees came none other than Lady Rex. She came to investigate the commotion. One raptor growled at Mortem. Then a Dilophosaurus prepared to spit. Then the raptors pounced at Mortem, followed by the Dilophosaurus. This is the weirdest vacation I've ever been on. The raptors and the Dilophosaurus teamed up to fight Mortem. But even with their combined efforts, the Mortem Rex was just too strong. We need more teeth in order to defeat this thing. But SpongeBob, where are we gonna find more teeth? 
Then Morton turned her attention towards the group. Ah, uh, guys, I think we're gonna die. Don't you think we see that, Squidward? As Morton was about to put an end to the game. There was a loud SpongeBob, his friends, and Mortem looked in the direction where the sound was coming from. Then they saw Mr. Krabs rush out of the jungle, followed by Plankton. Run for your lives! It's the appetizer! Then the T-Rex emerged from the trees. She let off the Holy shrimp! How did the T-Rex get out? It's a long story. We have to get out of here now. Mortem let out a response. The two giants stared at each other. The two giants then charged at each other and collided and a fight broke out between the two. At first, the two were evenly matched, but the Mortem eventually got the upper hand. As Mortem was about to finish the T-Rex off, a sad SpongeBob couldn't help but watch. Even Patrick got emotional. Mortem Rex has won. If the T-Rex couldn't defeat her, I don't know what can. Mortem's finishing move was interrupted by a noise. SpongeBob and the others looked to see what was going on. And there was the last remaining raptor charging in the mortem, followed by the last remaining Dilophosaurus. The two small carnivores jumped on the mortem to strap them and walked them to the T-Rex to recover. Once it recovered, the T-Rex looked at mortem. The three dinosaurs managed to overwhelm the She was so busy trying to fight off the T-Rex, Velociraptor, and Dilophosaurus that she wasn't watching where she was going. Mortem almost fell off the cliff herself. She looked down on the cliff. It was a very long way down, but that was a big Once Mortem looked back, the T-Rex rammed at Mortem and pushed her off the cliff. And the T-Rex let out a loud triumphant roar, and John Hammond, who watched from afar, was devastated. The raptor, Dilophosaur, and T-Rex looked at each other, then went their separate ways. Well, I guess the park belongs to the dinosaurs now. It's like dinosaurs and modern day people weren't meant to be. Let's go home, everyone. I agree, I'm done with this vacation. Hammond had arranged for a helicopter to pick up the gang when they got to the helipad. The gang said their goodbyes. Then SpongeBob walked over to a devastated John Hammond. Hammond? After careful consideration, I've decided not to endorse your park. So have I, SpongeBob. So have I. Then with that, the helicopter took off, taking the friends back home. Gee, I hope Hammond turns out okay now that his dream is gone. I hope so too, Sandy. Well, one thing's for sure, I hope we never have to run from a dinosaur ever again. Agreed. But unfortunately for SpongeBob and his friends, their dinosaur troubles were far from over.